Hey there Wargamers, Austin here with Deathray Designs, and here on the sixth day of Christmas, we're going to paint some Warp Strider. In this video, we're going to show you the exact paints and techniques that we use to paint our Warp Strider set for the studio that you'll see on the site. So the paints we're going to be using are flat black enamel primer, which we've already put down on our pieces. We've got gray and white Sinyl Res primer from Badger. I'm using the Shock White uh, from um, Montana. We've got an FW Black ink, which is super, super opaque. And then two individual Minotaur colors, Dusty Ground and Angelic Blood. So the first color that we're going to be using is the Steinal Res Gray Primer. Now, I know this is primer, we've already got primer on our pieces, but this is just a nice medium gray. I have a lot of it and it's easy to use. Uh, you can use whatever gray you want to. Uh, as long as it's a medium gray. There's plenty of them. I think even in the Minotaur line, there's base gray and it's about the same color. Uh, we're gonna load this into our airbrush here. Just gonna start off with a little bit. And the airbrush that we're using right now is the Badger Patriot 105, and we've got it set to about 30 PSI. So our goal with this is just to get a overall zenithal. So if you're not familiar with the term, zenithal talks is speaking to uh, the zenith or top of something and you want to get more highlights on top than on the undersides of your detail so that you're essentially creating false shadows. You're making this piece that is very small look like it is more realistic because it's casting more harsh and realistic shadows. So here we go. We're gonna start at the top. So we're not trying to go too heavy here but we do want to create a nice even layer here. And you can see that we're still much lighter on top than we are on the bottom. So bottoms of these are almost still black. So we like to keep that contrast going here. And even though I'm, I'm focusing on the top edge of things. I'm also focusing on the top half of it too. So not only am I coming in from the top angle, I'm also trying to stay focused here so you can see that there's still a tonal difference between the bottom and the top, even on the same sort of facing surfaces. And then on the columns, we're gonna do the same, same sort of thing. Focus on the top first. And especially because these don't have quite as many overhangs as the walls, you're going to really be relying on hitting more at the top than at the bottom. So we'll do the rest of those and be back in a sec. Our next paint is uh, Dusty Ground. This well-loved bottle will probably be empty by the end of this. Uh, this is just a slightly lighter gray. And all we're going to be doing with this is hitting some highlight areas. So some of the places that we're going to want to do um, would be maybe the, the middle of the top surface and then some of these areas right here, places that we want to have a little bit of pop of extra light. Um, we don't want to go overboard here, um, but having some more definition will be good. So just brightening that up a little bit in the center and then it'll transition to this darker gray so that when you set a column next to it, if you highlight the center of that, it goes from light to dark, on then dark on this to light. So the centers of each piece being a little brighter um, will give you a consistent look. So we're gonna try to hit these areas now. Okay, let's do the same on this side. Okay, so on the columns, let's, uh, let's go ahead and hit the center of the top here. I'm just sort of pulling away as I'm going so that um, you're getting concentrated white and, or uh, gray, and then you're sort of swirling back and pulling away so that it fades out towards the edges. Then on the sides here, let's just get a little bit kind of up near the top. One of the things you don't really want to do is get a ton of light around the actual light. You want the area around the light, um, it's a little counterintuitive, but you want it to be dark so that when you put a light on there, it has a lot of contrast in the surrounding area. So we're going to avoid dumping too much right, right next to it. On these panels, 
it's not bad, but you wanna keep some of that area nice and dark. So our next step is uh, these reliquaries. Um, we do those in red for our studio scheme. So in uh, an effort to speed up the process a bit, we've made some stencils for ourselves. They're a two layer sort of process and we're gonna be offering these on our web store soon, um, but they just sort of snap down over that. Um, so if you're using the airbrush, it's easier to isolate those areas um, so that you can paint them whatever color you want. So because we're gonna do ours red, um, for our color scheme. Um, we're gonna put down some white first um, and we're gonna aim on the upper edges of everything so that when we put the red down, we get an instant transition between bright red and dark red. So here we go. I've got some white loaded up in the airbrush right now and we're gonna start coming in these edges and I'm gonna kinda work my way down the center sort of transitioning, leaving a lot of areas in the dark. Okay, we'll do the same on this one. And I'm being very careful not to hit any of the surrounding areas. This is great for masking for an airbrush, but it may be difficult to use with a rattle can without um, adding a whole bunch more material around the edge to protect the rest of it. So we've got that. And now with angelic blood in the airbrush, put the stencil back on. And we're gonna to try to go over the entire door without getting all over everything else around it. So I know it looks a little pinky right now, but we're gonna wait for that to dry for just a second and we'll come back for a second coat. For the second coat. Going in for a slightly more opaque coat now. Still being careful not to sling this onto the edges. So let's just look at this from all angles. So the tops of these are still a little pinky. Okay, so we've got a nice uh, bright red at the top and it transitions down to a much more shadowy sort of brownish red. So on our columns, uh, we've got a few areas that we're going to address. Uh, one of them, this uh, crosshatch venting on the sides. We've also made another stencil here to help mask those off quickly uh, so you don't have to use a bunch of tape. Um, and we're also gonna do a little bit of OSL on the lights in this one. Uh, since we're using the airbrush, that'll be much easier and we'll have a, a colored glow and then a little white hot center in the middle to, to show that it's supposed to be bright instead of just a color. So, um, for these darker areas, we're gonna use some black FW ink, which is um, a really, really opaque ink. And you gotta be super careful with it. Um, Cause you can, you can blow out an area really, really fast. Um, and because we have a, a, a gradient going from light to dark here, I sometimes like to do an opposite gradient when I'm doing sort of detail work. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do dark on top of these. So let's see if I can do this kind of one-handed here. All right, so we've got it on top of the detail that's engraved. And what we're gonna do is go really lightly over the top area. We're gonna get a little bit over everything, but we're gonna focus more on the top. So here we go. So we've got a little bit over everything and a little more at the top. So now that's our effect. And I like it because you still get a lot of contrast up here at the top as it sort of fades into the bottom. So now that we've got all the vents done, we're gonna do one step on the light fixtures before we actually uh, do the OSL. And I think this is sort of a pre-OSL thing. We want to darken up the area just a little bit around it so as we were talking about before, you want some dark areas around your light so that the lights look brighter. Um, we're going to use some of the same FW uh, black ink and just come around with just a slight black haze. Just a little tiny bit does it with this, it's so opaque. So there we go. 
just getting it a little bit darker before we add the light. For our OSL, we're going to introduce two more paint colors. We've got irradiated yellow from Minotaur, super bright yellow, um, and we've got ceramite white from Citadel. And we're going to be using both of these in the airbrush. And you might say, Austin, why would you use a Citadel base color in an airbrush? This is the one exception to the rule of, for the most part, using non-Citadel airbrush colors in an airbrush. Ceramite white, when you thin it down, is the absolute secret sauce for using white and getting a nice, even tone. Everything else just seems to speckle so much. And for whatever reason, the high pigment Citadel base color is just like a, a, a secret level up for white in the airbrush. So we're gonna be using that for these because we're trying to do a really um, clean haze effect and not speckling. So now that we've got our irradiated yellow loaded up, um, we're gonna cover up all the area that we put white down on um, and it can extend a little bit past that so that essentially this will be turned yellow and all that haze will be turned yellow and we'll have a slight yellow tint even onto the areas that are supposed to be darker around it. So here we go. Nice and simple. You've got your yellow sort of light cast around uh, and it looks much better up against darker areas because um, it, it, even though it's not a particularly bright yellow right there, it, um, it definitely shows up more on darker areas. So the last thing we're gonna do uh, is a little bit of dry brushing. We're going back to the dusty ground, which was the, the lighter color that we put down on a few places. Um, and because the straight paint is still lighter than what we have here, because this is uh, an amalgamation of the top color and you're still seeing some of the darker colors through it, um, putting more of the lighter color on it will still brighten it some. So loading up my brush a little bit, we're gonna knock off almost all of it just leaving a tiny little bit. We don't want any streaks or globs or anything. I'm just gonna go over everything real quick. And when done right, each of the layers should be a rather subtle effect. And you're just trying to get it to catch on all the edges of everything. I'm sure that most of you know what dry brushing is already and this is not news to you, but um, dry brushing should be a rather subtle effect most of the time. And on this side, we're gonna be particularly careful not to overload it just because we have things that are not gray and this dry brushing will still look good on here, but you just don't wanna overdo it on these. A Little bit of edge uh, that's super bright in contrast with the red. Um, I think it looks really nice um, and helps really define the edges of um, the, each of the, the little red elements there. Um, red is such a, a hard, color to sort of focus on when you have like large fields of it. So having some non-red edges to help break it up is really gonna make it a lot easier. We'll get the top real quick. And that's as easy as it is. This piece is pretty much done though. We could go in and black out the vents to give it a little bit more contrast, but for all intents and purposes, this is a done piece. I've got the brush loaded back up again with the same stuff. I'm gonna come around the bottom edges. Now, in most cases, I would recommend doing uh, the dry brushing before you do the lights, um, but in this case, uh, we got excited. We got a little ahead of ourselves, so we're doing it afterwards, and I'm just trying to stay away from all the areas that are gonna be yellow. We don't wanna put gray on top of any of those nice bright colors, so we're just gonna leave those areas alone. Make sure I get around the top edges. Let's see if I can get those as well. There we go. And that's all done too. And with that, we've got some finished Warp Strider pieces. These techniques are easy to use and easy to follow, so try them out for yourself. Uh, believe in you, you can do it. Also, check out the rest of the videos in this series, and we've got another one dropping tomorrow. In fact, that one's gonna be for painting the matching base toppers for this set. So I definitely encourage you to check that one out if you like this one. You can see all the products and terrain that we're using in these videos over at deathraydesigns.com 12 days. There'll be special pricing on all the products that we use throughout the end of the event, so definitely go check it out while they're on sale. Thank you again, and until next time, happy working.